Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Heather Baxter with HB Ministries, a place for women to believe, behold, and become all God's created you to be in every single season of life. So if you're new to this channel, welcome. I hope you enjoy it. I do daily devotionals, which that's what this episode is, and I'll talk to you about that in a second. And I also do weekly online Bible studies or training. And so if you're interested in having the training notes or whatever we're going to discuss for that week, I highly recommend that you subscribe to heatherbaxter.com. Um, right at the top of my website, you subscribe there and that'll shoot you out a weekly newsletter. In that newsletter, I'm always sending out the Bible study schedule for each month. So right now we're in April. When you subscribe, I send you a calendar that has all the verses every single day. And for April, we are going to be doing my run book. And so you do not, do not at all need my run book. However, if you follow me on Instagram Live and you watch my stories, you will see me taking snapshots of whatever we are studying that day. And of, co of course, I washi tape up my book and my run book becomes my journal. It's what I like to write in, what I like to take notes in. Um, it just becomes my story. And so that's why I'm recommending that you get the book is because then you can, you know, take notes in there um, and further study the one verse that I'm giving you. You may have pages to go on and read about that verse and train yourself up on that word. So if you're interested in the book, heatherbaxter.com, you can go there and um, you can, it says run study and you can purchase my book right there. So it's a powerful study and we're going to do 30 days of 30 different verses. The theme for April is to run in such a way. And I'm going to talk about that today because the Lord wants every single step that you take to be shaped in his purpose. Whether you're struggling or celebrating, he's up to something. And so I want to bring you encouragement today. I know we are going through a odd season. Um, April 1st, it's not no April Fool's. Like this is really happening. I really wish it was an April Fool's. But we're going to learn and we're going to utilize this time and we're going to step up to the start line and we're going to run this out with God. So without further ado, let's get started on today's verse, April 1st. So April 1st, right here, I am on page, uh, the very, very beginning, the intro, right after the table of contents. And it tells you a little bit about the study. That's the heading. Well, there's a verse that I want to start on today, and it is Genesis 28, 15. Again, you do not need the uh, book. Please get a pen and a paper and jot this verse down. Look it up today and journal about it. The most powerful thing we can do right now in the midst of this mile is to really, really run out the truth with God because he's shaping you for something. He's shaping the nation for something. You will be okay. And this verse will confirm it. Genesis 28, 15 says, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Now, for those that journeyed with me in the March devotions, we studied all about quieting ourselves down, listening to the voice of God. We studied all about our giftings and we studied all about um, the idea that God has a spoken dream and a spoken vision for us. Now, many of you are asking where my vision course is right now. Studying how God speaks visions to your life, what could be and should be according to the will of God. That's what this class is going to teach you. You're going to study all of the book of Habakkuk and you're going to learn to write a vision down in the season that you're in and you're going to learn to run it out. Though it may tarry, you will win in the end. You just have to understand what he's trying to speak to you individually, um, financially, with your marriage. Maybe you're separated and you're just like, where am I going, God? Here he has that planned out. 
Um, maybe you're going through a season of transition. He has that figured out. Our nation is going through a season of transition. This month, this study is gonna help you run out every mile so you're in position to win and your trainer, which is him, is going to speak to you in a powerful way. So with that in mind, let's jump down and look at this verse. What I did in my book is I circled the word behold because I love that our our motto for this group is believe, behold, and become. What does behold mean? I wrote it down at the top. Behold is to see and observe a thing, a person, a promise, especially a remarkable one. Well, all of God's promises are remarkable. There's something to gaze upon that is beholding. And I pray that there's a movement here for women to behold and let God control everything gaze upon his promises. You need to learn to respond and step up and behold. So I circled that first word in the verse, in today's word, Genesis 28, 15, I circled behold. Then this morning with my coffee, I felt like I wanted to underline everything that had to do with you. So if you can see here, I went ahead and I underlined with you and I underlined keep you, bring you back, not leave you. And man, in a situation like we're in today, don't you feel like fear is trying to tell you that oh, you're not going to be able to keep what you have. You're not going to be able to keep your job. God's not with you. He's he's not going to bring anything back that was lost. Um, he's going to leave you. He's going to leave the nation. He's not in on this. He absolutely is. The 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 here's the key, guys, is it says I ha until I have done what I have spoken to you. Do we know what he's speaking to us? What is he speaking to you and to the nation? That is why you're here. That is what we're going to learn in today's verse. So here's what I want you to understand is I circled a few things on the first page. For those that don't have the book, here's what I wrote um, on one of the pages. It says, wherever you may be, whether you're struggling or celebrating, there is always a leg of God's race waiting for you. With the strength of the Lord, we are to walk toward that starting line, which is where we're at today, amen, and allow God's truths in this study to empower us to embrace this full race. Sisters, we're going to run this out, and we need endurance, and we need to be strong. We are going to keep pressing on. We are not going to invite um, fear in, and April study is going to reassure us that all the time that we're going through this, he's building your faith. He's building your character and he's building your strength each step of the way, each step of the way. And so I am so excited to run this out with you. Three things I want you to jot down about today's verse and we're all done. Number one is God begins. God begins at my point of need. God begins at my point of need. Wow. Is the nation in need? Our small business is in need. The economy's in need. Healthcare uh, workers are in need, hospital systems, um, medication, everything. We're in need of so much right now. And then I'm sure if we take this a step under our roofs, under our home, we're in need of a lot of things. And I highly, highly recommend that you watch my uh, study, because that was one of our weekly studies, where I talk about Psalm 91 and how to spiritually sanitize your home. And that way, you're going to be prepared and you're going to be understanding how God's going to fulfill all your needs under that rooftop. Because there's personal needs, there's emotional needs, there's spiritual needs right now. God wants to fill every single one of those drawers. And he has a plan for you, specifically for you. So we aren't aware of our great need and our great need for God in our lives until we move into a crisis moment. That puts us at a crisis of belief. So now we're at a place of believing, beholding, and becoming all God's created us to be with more excitement. Like we actually want it. We know that our own abilities come to an end. We can see that right now when we watch TV. Honestly, I turn off TV because all it does is invite more fear in. TV is off. Put on God's word and know that the rug is not yanked out from under you. Amen. It is not. Ask God what your purpose is right now. Maybe he has you in a season right now to create a cozy space. I'm down in my girl cave. I call it my girl cave. I create this space 
I have a space where I can light a candle if I want in the evening. I can put my foot up. I've got my crazy cute pillows here. And I just have it decorated where I can get a cup of coffee, whatever I want, and sit down here and read and journal. This is the time to journal because you know what? God's going to speak to you and you are going to hear him. You're going to hear him differently than me. But as you study the word and you will begin to see his grace and the way he speaks to you, which brings us to number two. And number two is God begins with his grace. So number one was God begins with a point of need. Number two, God begins with his grace. No failures are going to be mentioned. No failures of your past will be mentioned here. Amen. God only wants to present his favor. But what's so amazing is he wants to give grace, unmerited favor to you, regardless of what your past look like. It's like a start over. It's like, meet me at the start line, run with me, and let's run this out and watch what God does. Honestly, you'll be running and not even knowing you're running because you're going to enjoy all of the surroundings. I remember when I was running the Chicago Marathon, and I remember all of the activity around me, and I was so involved in looking and watching people that it distracted me from my race. And that's exactly what God wants to do. He wants to distract you from the fear that the enemy wants to bring in your life right now, and he wants to just cover you in his grace. Why not? It's awesome. And I promise you, I experienced it in the marriage breakdown when I went through that. I experienced it in pivotal times in my life. And you will find that in my run book. For the sake of time, I'm not going to get into that. But maybe we'll visit it, visit it sometime in April if we hit a verse around that topic. Uh, number three is you have to respond by stepping up to the start line. It's up to you. Okay, it's up to you. So number one, God begins at our point of need. Number two is God begins with his grace. And number three, it's up to you to step up to the start line. He wants to bring you and shape you. He has something exceedingly abundantly and above all that you can think or imagine. That's a verse in Ephesians and it's one of my favorite. He can do exceedingly abundantly and above all that we can think or imagine. Step back look at the start line and say, I'm in this. I'm running full force. I'm ready to go. And I'm going to run it out with God. Let God control. He knows the best way. And I think right now as we're losing control over everything, so we can learn to run in such a way. Blessings, friends, today. I pray that you'll believe in these promises. I pray that you'll behold them so God can allow this situation to become the best for you. So together, let's say, let us believe, let us behold, and let us become all God's created us to be. In Jesus' name, we trust you. So I love you guys, and I will see you in tomorrow's devotional. Bye-bye.